Adam Scott and Hideki Matsuyama, by the way, bringing the most experience with nine and four previous starts in the President's Cup, respectively. They're also the only major champions on the squad. They also have the most experience at Quail Hollow. This team, on paper anyway, has the appearance of being a heavy, heavy underdog. And the captain joins us now. Trevor, the road to this moment sure seemed eventful, complicated even. How would you describe this process? Uh, I think that's a pretty good way to describe it there, David. It, uh, it's been a little bit rocky at times. We've had a lot of hurdles thrown in our way. But, uh, you know, this feels great. Finally at a point to where we have 12 players hungry and ready to go uh, up against a strong American team. Trevor, the situation's obviously been very fluid for several months now. And there's, while you're working through your process, there's this tandem narrative that's been going on that the international team has been decimated by these defections to live. How much did it actually impact your process to get to today? Well, look, it absolutely uh, did affect it because we had players that were on their way to automatically qualifying that then uh, they weren't eligible any longer. We had other players that at the time uh, when they left the PGA Tour, they were in the top eight qualifiers and then they slid to be just outside. So it sure has not been It has been an eventful process. Uh, myself, my backroom team has had to be pretty agile and nimble trying to figure out exactly where we're at at all times, trying to gather as much information as we can so that we can in turn try to put these 12 players in the best possible spot that they can be when we roll up to Quail Hollow. So I'm glad that it's all behind us. We're excited to be in this point now to where we really can rebuild with 12 players that are hungry and 12 players that wanted to be there. We've, we've already had a trip right off to the Tour Championship to Quail Hollow, spent a couple times together as a unit, um, creating that team camaraderie and chemistry, or shall I say, building on that um, you know, from the squad system that we've had in the last couple of years. And we feel like uh, we're on a good road right now. We need to trust the process. Obviously, we've got a huge mountain in front of us, uh, an extremely tough American team, maybe the best American team ever fielded that we'll be facing on their home soil. But, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that excites, excites you as a competitor, is having an opportunity like this to play against the best and see exactly how you stack up. Well, that mountain, Trevor, grew a little taller with the defection of, of a player like Cameron Smith, who said in Memphis he planned on playing uh, in this President's Cup. Do you feel like the players were honest with you during this process? Uh, I would say yes. The players were honest with me. Uh, maybe not honest with everybody else, but they were honest with me, and I sure do appreciate that. Now, look, I have a lot of respect for all these different players. I've gotten to know them all really well over the last few years. And uh, the squad environment that we've had with all of our team get-togethers, all of these players were a part of that. And so I'm thankful to them that they were being honest with me and they were keeping me in the loop with exactly where they were at so that we in turn could try and put this team in a spot to where we still feel like we've got a chance when we roll up to Quail Hollow. But uh, look, it's, it's been a rocky time. Uh, we've had some adversity thrown in our way, but uh, still... We're here now. We've got 12 that are ready to fight. We've got 12 that are hungry. And we look forward to that opportunity. Trevor, I'm curious how your criteria changed along the way through this process. Because if one player is suddenly no longer eligible for you, what's the roll-on effect of that as you start to look at other candidates and whether or not they match with the other guys in your team? Or does that bring other people into the mix once one other candidate suddenly becomes for front of mind for you? Yeah, so when we um, had our qualification criteria, initially it was eight automatic qualifiers. Uh, we devised an international points system that I thought was working extremely well. It was doing exactly what we wanted to do to allow players from all over the world to try and earn points. And then we were going to have four picks. But uh, as players that automatically qualified became ineligible, I then get or got more picks. So ended up in a very similar system to, uh, to Davis Love with six automatic qualifiers and then six picks on the back of that. And, uh, you know, what you're going to try and do at that point is take in all the information from the golf course, from uh, how to find a way to get the team to gel, how's things going to be working in the locker room, what are the best matchups that you can get, 
in foursomes and four ball and just try and blend it all together. I uh, am extremely thankful to my assistant captains. They've, they've been very supportive, very helpful, along with the rest of our backroom staff to, uh, to try and get to this point. So we're, we're pumped about this. You know, we're, we're inside of two weeks here. We have a great opportunity in front of us, and uh, we're looking forward to finally getting to Quail Hollow and, and starting to hit some shots out there. Trevor, I noticed all of your picks are between the age of 27 and 31. Why not a little more seasoning? Adam Hadwin, 34. Ryan Fox, 35. How difficult were those phone calls to make? Extremely difficult. Look, there were a number of players uh, that were right in with a chance. Uh, like I said, we've had this squad of 25 for a couple of years, and so those calls were extremely difficult to make, Damon. Some of the toughest moments that I've really ever had is calling people that are friends, calling people that I respect greatly to let them know that they haven't quite made the team. Got to say, though, because of the atmosphere that we have built around our team, all of those players took it in their stride. Uh, they were extremely humble. They were obviously disappointed. But immediately, like immediately, they all said that they'll do whatever they can for the team. They'll be supporting us. And all this does is light another fire inside them to try and make this team in Canada in a couple of years. We, you know, as a, as a team, as a unit, uh, although some people don't think so, we, we, when you take a look at social media and the like, uh, we've all gotten extremely close. You know, we've, we've built this bond since since uh, Australia, since Royal Melbourne, uh, where we have our shield, where we have a flag to play under, we have team colours. All of this stuff is new for us. And we feel like, uh, you know, we're, we're just on the way up trying to build something. And so we've had great team chemistry and camaraderie over the last couple of years. And so all of these players that didn't quite make it, they're disappointed, uh, but they're excited to see how the team gets on. Conversely, the players uh, that got the call... Uh, to where they were in the team, they, they were so pumped. You know, it's been anxious couple of months, really, since the Open, let's say, for a lot of these players, grinding, trying to make their way onto the team, trying to impress the captains to see if they can get a pick or not. Uh, some guys, you could see their play struggled a little over that stretch, and other, other players stepped up to the plate and really did finish strong, if you look at a player like Taylor Pendrith. So uh, it sure has been an interesting process. I will say that, you know, when I was asked to be captain by the players right after Royal Melbourne in 2019, uh, you know, that, that was before there was such a thing as a pandemic and before our professional sport was fractured like this. Um, it's turned out to have worked its way in a, a little differently to what I first envisioned. But nevertheless, I'm proud of everybody that's involved and we're just counting down the days to get to Quail Hollow. Trevor, picking up on this idea of camaraderie that's increased on the international team, it's always been a perception that the challenge for the international captain is having a geographically and culturally diverse group of players and try to find where the, the bonds are, the points of commonality between those people. And you've, you know, you've got four Korean guys on the team, you have a couple of Australians, a couple of Canadians. Do you feel the need to go by this old play them by their nationality and put them together as a team? Or is that concept just not really relevant to you anymore? It's not really relevant to us anymore. Uh, Amen. that's a great question. It was in the past, and we would have to try and find ways to get over those cultural differences, the language bar barriers. But as we have become more of one unit and had this squad mentality to where we brought people in, showed them exactly how we like to do things, how our team operates, what our team stands for. Everybody falls in line because the commonality that you spoke of is the shield. The, the commonality is our team colors. We finally have those kinds of things. The love of the game, the love of having the opportunity to compete against such a tough team, the Americans. You gotta remember, when we grew up all over the world, outside of the US and outside of Europe, we would watch the Ryder Cup as young kids and teenagers uh, honing our skills, looking at the Ryder Cup going, man, I, I want to do something like that. You can see the energy, you can feel the passion of those two teams going up against each other. And until the President's Cup, we never had that opportunity. So us as a team, we're thankful for that opportunity. 
And uh, I can tell you what, I spent two days last week with these 12 players and they are hungry and they are pumped to have this opportunity to get to Quail Hollow. Trevor, how important is the veteran leadership of a player like Adam Scott or Hideki Matsuyama in light of the fact that this team is so young and facing that mountain as you described? Yeah, eight rookies on the team. We had seven down in Australia, so we've increased that number. Uh, but those two guys, vitally important for us. Adam Scott, at 42 years of age, this is going to be his 10th President's Cup. So that sets a record for the international team. It's something that we are um, extremely proud of and uh, thankful to have him on the team. He really is a stabilizing force for us. Uh, that goes without you know, talking about his golf game. He's been world class for a couple decades. But he really is a stabilizing force for us. He's somebody that is extremely popular uh, in the locker room. He's uh, clear and calm in his demeanor so the youngsters can feed off of that. And then Hideki, much the same. You know, he's a humble warrior. Uh, he, he, he's not rambunctious. He's not arrogant. He just lets his clubs do the talking, but he, without a shadow of a doubt, has a presence and an aura about him uh, that is, is palpable. You can feel it when you're, when you're in the locker room. And so those two players, for sure, are going to be inside the ropes leaders for us, and we'll be looking to them. We'll be looking to them hard to, uh, to get out there, to send a message, to bring their A game on the golf course, and then also uh, be leaders in the locker room as well. Trevor, does it help your team to, to have this storyline going on that you've been hobbled in some way by the defections? Does it take pressure off your guys and give them some fuel to prove something? And conversely, does it put a little more pressure on the American team who are already the favourites and are now being told, well, how could you possibly lose? Well, look, I don't know if it affects the Americans. They're so good <clears throat> that um, we'll have to see how they react to it. I think they're kind of getting used to uh, being the favourites. Uh, they sure were the favourites going into whistling straights and they dominated the European team. But for us, look, we were going to be underdogs regardless. Uh, we've, we've had a pretty rough record in this tournament. But like I say, we felt like 2019 was turning the page and, and building fresh. And we had a great shot going into the Sunday in Australia. Couldn't quite get it done. And we're trying to launch off of that from things that we learnt there. But yeah, I Eamon, we're, we're absolutely the underdogs. Uh, you know, we're going to be representing underdogs all over the world that week, whether it be, you know, in sports, in business, if it's kids in school that are underdogs out there, you know, we're that team. We're going to be out there fighting really hard to, uh, to prove that we belong. Trevor, I've been struck how transparent you've been through this process, especially on social media, answering questions of complete strangers. You know, is so-and-so going to stay? And you writing back, oh, the book that I could write. Why have you been so transparent and open about this process on social media? Well, in a lot of ways, I think it's dangerous to lie, Damon, because then you've got to have to have a great me memory <laughs> to try to remember all the little stories you've told. So it's just... It's just me being me. I like to be open and I like to be honest. Uh, I appreciate it when there's fans out there that reach out and want to ask a serious question. Look, there's a lot of junk out there that you have to ignore. And at times it's difficult to do that too. But the people that I believe are sincere and that there's no malice involved, I, tr I try and give them a straight answer. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we're trying to build a fan base. We're trying to, uh, trying to help people understand what this team stands for, who the players are that represent us. So what kind of leader would I be if I was just out there not communicating to people that actually are interested in our team? So it's just me being authentic, being open and honest, letting everybody know exactly where I stand. And I'll continue to do that, whether it be uh, through this captaincy with the international team over the next few weeks or in my broadcasting future over what hopefully will be the next couple of decades. Trevor, the job you initially signed up to here turned out to be not quite as conventional as the job you probably thought you were going to get. Regardless of what happens at Quail Hollow in a couple of weeks, would you like to do it again without all of this extraneous noise around you? Uh, no, I don't think so, Eamon. You know, we decided down in Australia that we were going to change the format of the way we do things 
on our team in a number of different areas and Captain C was one of them. We felt like at times it got a little bit stale when cup captains hung around too long. And so what we wanted to do was put a particular person, try and be smart with who we choose for what venue and in what city, uh, put that position, that person in that position, uh, put them in place and just let them go. Let them go hard for two years, dedicate their lives to it like my wife and I have over the last couple of years, give it their best and then move on and let somebody else have a shot at it. So uh, that's the way we look at it at, uh, regarding the international team right now. Well, another big step taken with these captain's picks today, Trevor. Thanks for hopping on. We'll see you in a couple of weeks in Charlotte, my friend. Always great to hang with you guys. Have a good one.